Welcome back, everyone. It's Wade Boggs fan. Uh, it is Saturday. Hope everyone is having a good weekend. Um, today's just a fairly small uh, mail day. A couple Boggs uh, pickups and a vintage to add to my collection. I'm still waiting on that one card that I'm hoping to, to show off and do a video on that uh, quote-unquote potential rare Wade Boggs card. Um, it's coming PWE, and so I don't have a tracking number. It's coming from Texas, and it was I paid for it on um, late on the 14th in, in, in the AM, and it was marked as shipped on the 14th. So maybe the okay figured technically it was maybe the 15th. It's the 24th. So um, not sure why it's taking so long. I hope if I don't get it Monday, I'll have to just double check with the seller to see what's up, whether he actually did send it in the mail. Luckily, it's not, it didn't cost me much. It was like three bucks or something like that. So it uh, wasn't an expensive card, but still anxious to get it and and show it off and do a video. So before I get to the three cards I have to show off for you, uh, it's been a little while since I've done one of my hobby talks. Uh, one of the live uh, videos where I have uh, someone come on and we just talk baseball cards and other things about the hobby. And so I am I have in the works, hopefully sometime next week, maybe later, um, this this coming week, uh, maybe on a Friday, maybe Friday. I don't know. I'm still working out the fine details. As soon as I do, um, I'll, I'll let you know in uh, hopefully my next video. Um, but it's uh, someone that most of you uh, know very well. Uh, in the YouTube community, uh, excited to be able to have him on and just talk for probably about an hour about baseball cards and stuff like that. So look forward to uh, an announcement. Like I said, hopefully my next video, I'll be able to announce and give details to everyone of the exact day and time. Uh, if you're available to uh, you know, join the initial live stream, and then of course we'll have it uh, recorded and uh, posted to my channel. So this would be the third one of the hobby talk. I think it's been over a month, maybe close to two. Um, I wanted to do others uh, and, and more more of them, but uh, just had slipped uh, away a little bit, but uh, I wanna get back on that. So I think that's all for now. I'm gonna turn the camera around and we'll take a look at the three cards I got in the mail. All right, uh, here's the uh, first card we'll look at. We'll take a look at the uh, two Boggs cards I got in the mail. And the first one, I, I think the set is technically called Tops X Pete Alonzo. Uh, this was, I think, the uh, the next go around. I think the first one was the Gary V, uh, specially designed. Uh, he picked the players and the card design and stuff like that. And so it was Gary V's picks for cards and I think this is now the next year and they had Pete Alonzo do it and in the back there this is the one subset for Florida sort of hard to see Florida roots and in the back here in case you can't read it says uh, the polar bear is from Florida Pete Alonzo has great pride in his Florida roots hence Florida roots there and he is not alone a cast of the game's biggest stars current and past Call the Sunshine State home. And at the bottom it says a Florida Roots theme, players, and design curated by Pete Alonso. So pick that one up. Uh, they only have, in, in this set, there's only a base. There are no parallels. However, there are um, autograph. I believe there's a base autograph and maybe a blue, gold, and white version. Um, I haven't seen any of the autographs pop up on eBay, but um, this is the base card. All right, the next card is uh, Allen and Ginter, and this is the Allen and Ginter X, the black border. So I picked one of those up. Um, I'm not sure if I have won or picked up the um, Ginter X Mini yet. I'm I'm not sure, but this is the, the, the base. Um, sort of, I, I like the design with the sort of, it's not quite gold. It looks more of like a copper uh, foil or font there, um, basic back as the Allen and Ginter, but, uh, the Allen Ginter X. 
And then the last card is in addition to my vintage PSA collection and another 1977 one that I picked up. I think I alluded to this uh, when I showed off my the first group of 77s that I received and said that I, I picked one up and it was more of the buying the card, not the grade, but also because it also fit into my budget. And it's the 77 Nolan Ryan. Um, found this in my budget, the, the sevens, and forget about the eights and nines. Um, but even the sevens were a little bit pricey, but this six was in my price range, and I got it mainly because of the centering. Um, that's that's almost dead-on centering. Registration's good. What I think takes it down to a six and a little bit of soft corners, which, again, I do not mind the corners. I know other people are, um, they, they want corners more than centering. Um, but uh, to me, I'll have some corner wear. But if you look closely, and you have to sort of look closely, in his hat there, there's a little bit, there's a print mark. And I've seen that on some other cards, so it's somewhat common. But I think that print mark is what brought it down to a six from maybe a seven or an eight. Um Honestly, if you don't really know it's there, um, it, it, it doesn't bother me at all. Now, if it was on his jersey and it was a dark thing or really, really noticeable, I wouldn't have picked it up. But look at the back. I mean, the back's really in nice shape. You can maybe tell their little corner wear down in that corner again, which, which brought it down. But hey, for a six, I'm very happy uh, with this one. In my price range to, to boot, which is the, which is the best. So um, I'm even looking at um, a, a 77. I don't want to say who it is. It's on my watch list. That um, I think there's another. I think there's there's a slight microscopic paper loss that grades it a three. But if you look at that card, my gosh, it it looks like a gorgeous card. And I'm I'm contemplating going after that one because it's very reasonably priced and again i i'm not i'm not trying to get uh, the highest grade um of these cards it's what fits in my budget and yeah this fits the bill right there so uh, very happy to add another nolan ryan to my psa vintage collection we'll try to know, don't know what's going on with the video there on the color but uh we'll leave that there because uh, to end the video here, it is now trivia time. And here's the question from the last video. Who was the first left-handed pitcher to win the Cy Young Award? So who was the first lefty? Uh, had a couple guesses of Koufax. Uh, I think at least one guess of Whitey Ford. Um, all good guesses. But uh, the answer is... Warren Spawn. Um, 1956 was the first year, I believe, of the Cy Young Award, and Warren Spawn won it in 1957. That year, he won 21 games, and of those 21 games, 18 were complete games. Uh, definitely something you do not see today where, you know, you're, you're lucky to have a pitcher have, you know, a decent number of quality starts where he gets at least into the sixth inning, just of the nature of baseball today. But man, back in the 50s and 60s, you had pitchers throwing lots of innings, were still successful, didn't have Tommy John surgery left and right. So, uh, But then again, they weren't all trying to throw 110 miles an hour. But uh, regardless, he won 21 games that year, and 18, or, uh, 18 of those 21 games were complete games. Um just amazing. So here is the new question. Who was the first rookie in baseball history to win the Rookie of the Year award and the MVP in the same season? First rookie to win Rookie of the Year honors and the MVP in the same season. I have a, I have a feeling some of my followers are going to know that right away. Um, hint, hint, uh, since I have uh, some followers of a certain uh, team that I'm sure will pick it up right away. I don't want to give away too many hints. Uh, it's probably a fairly easy question, but at any rate, uh, there you go. That's all I have. Uh, hope you have a good rest of the weekend. Thanks for watching.
and I'll see you next time.